First at four, our biggest snow of the season and our coldest temperatures in two years happening within 24 hours and the snow gets started tonight. We'll look at the totals we're expecting. Paul? Oh, Ben, to snow day or not to snow day? That is the question. Like, no, that's really a question educators are grappling with. I'll explain. Hi, Devin. Hi there, Paula. Looking forward to that. Also, police are looking for clues in Troy after a body is found in a parking lot. Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, I'm Devin Skillian. First at four, in for Karen Drew today. A winter storm warning goes into effect tonight for most of southeast Michigan. Hats off to you, Karen, for knowing to take off today and tomorrow. Let's check in with Ben and how much snow we can expect, Ben. Well, in all fairness, in all fairness, in all fairness, Devin, we've been talking about this for days. True. And I'll tell you that uh, that snow is pretty much going to materialize, or at least it looks like uh, what we've been talking about uh, since last week. Here's Storm Tracker 4. That first push is pretty much out of here. We've got a couple flakes remaining there uh, just on the uh, east side and down river. But the big push of snow, that is just now starting to move north of Defiance Bowling Green. It's going to be in Toledo within the hour plus. And we'll likely start seeing that snow in the south zone by about 6 p.m. tonight. So winter storm warnings in effect for everybody starting at 6 p.m. And that runs through noon on Tuesday. Although I do think that we're going to see the snow start to taper off right around sunrise tomorrow morning. And there are the totals. Everything from purple to the colder colors. That's six inches plus of snow, and that does encompass most of our area. As far as temperatures go, those are going to be in the teens. It is going to be obviously a cold night. Not as cold as what we're expecting Tuesday night, but uh, we'll fry this fish first. And uh, we'll talk more about another storm on its heels in just a few minutes, Devin. Or more. All right, Ben. Now, road crews across Metro Detroit getting prepared for what could be, as Ben just put it, substantial snowfall overnight. This is video from earlier in Oakland County where the salt trucks are being uh, filled for what they expect will be a long night ahead. About 10,000 tons of salt expected to be used. Officials from the Oakland County Road Commission say they've had contingency plans in place now for this week. There is definitely a pandemic going on, but we're still doing the same type of work coming into the garages and the offices and doing the same type of work. So it's, it's a little bit surreal. We're doing everything we can, but even with that, there will be areas where it's slippery. So we ask people to please, you know, take your time. Several communities have issued snow emergencies. We've got a complete list on the home page right now at clickondetroit.com. Now tomorrow's severe weather with it approaching a unique dilemma is shaping up for parents and students. We're talking about a snow day. With districts fully integrated into remote learning, will districts declare a snow day this time around? Paul Tutman spoke with administrators today on a um, surprisingly complicated question, Paula. Yeah, Devin, it really is complicated because historically snow days are all about getting kids to and from home and school safely. But with this pandemic, what we've learned is ostensibly we can get kids into class and into learning remotely, which means there really is a question about whether or not snow days are actually needed. You could call it education gumbo. All of the things educators have to grapple with and throw into the pot to get children educated during a pandemic. Remote learning, face-to-face -face learning, hybrid learning, parents, teachers, students, and now the issue of snow days. Are the kids going to be able to get there? Are they going to be standing outside in sub-zero temperatures? Are they, do they need to be online right now because... You know, it's a, it's a critical time of year. Or we're seeing that the, the learning loss is happening. Or are we sensing from our kids too that, you know what, and our staff that, you know what, we just need, we just need a, a pause. In Michigan, it is a foregone conclusion that you're probably going to have some snow days. In fact, the state allows for up to six snow days. But now that we have remote learning, we now know children can get educated, whether there are 30 inches of snow on the ground and counting or a clear, cold, sunny day. So why do we need snow days? That is a question educators have been debating, particularly when there is measurable learning loss in the last 10 months of educating through a pandemic. Another thing that plays into learning loss, though, is that mental health side, that burnout, that leads to learning loss as well. So being able to be a little bit fluid on it and really understanding kind of the needs at any given time of what's happening, it, it makes 
sense to be able to have a little flexibility during this time when everybody's naturally flexible to say, yep, you know what, we need to keep powering through. We're all going to be online today. Let's do, everybody's doing virtual, you know, here's when you log on, it's normal day, but you'll all be virtual. Or, you know what, we're really sensing that today's a day we just, let's just have a good old fashioned snow day. Rihanna Orr has three children in the Lands Cruz School District. Snow days are an important break. If the snow days are already built in the schedule, why would we be holding on to those days? This is a very stressful time for, I think it's more stressful for children than we give them credit for. Her two sons are doing full face-to-face -face learning and her daughter is in school four days a week for a hybrid learning model. And she says... We all need snow slash mental health slash give us all a break day. Yeah, so, okay, so here's the good news, and that is in our region, most school districts are on winter break, though a lot of them do go back Wednesday. Some of them actually go back tomorrow, but a lot of them go back Wednesday, but some of them are off the full week. But, but here is the thing. The school districts really do have to grapple with this. They say they're going to take this on a case-by-case -case basis. They know not everybody is going to be happy, but Devin, stay with us at 5.30, an interesting conversation with a mother and a daughter one says, yeah, we should have snow days. The other says, absolutely not. I wonder if you can guess which one thinks we should just plow right through. I got, what a, I fair, just did there? Plow I got right a fair through. idea. Exactly. Yeah. But that's why we're saying this is deceptively complicated. So, Paula, we'll see you again at 530. Uh, reminder, though, from the school closings to all the snow emergencies, we've got you covered for complete coverage with tomorrow's severe weather. Tune in to the only morning show with two meteorologists, Brandon and Paul, will be tracking the snow. Kim DiGiulio will be following whatever traffic problems there will arise. And we expect some uh, tomorrow morning, beginning at 4.30 a.m. All right, other news this afternoon, a death investigation underway in Troy after a body is found in a parking lot. Employees at the Bell Tire on Rochester Road found the man around 7 this morning. Investigators say a 38-year-old man from Flint was found covered in snow with a stab wound to the chest. They say it is unclear how long he had been there. Police are trying to notify next of kin before they release his identity. Washtenaw County Sheriff's deputies are investigating a triple shooting in Superior Township. Three men were shot late last night after an altercation at a home on Knollwood Bend. Two men were taken to the hospital or in serious condition. Third man also shot in serious condition and in custody in the hospital. Deputies believe the shooting was not random, though they are working to figure out what led to the shooting. Now, breaking news just into our newsroom. Beaumont, Beaumont Health is canceling more than 1,800 second-dose appointments for the coronavirus vaccine. Hospital officials say a reduction in Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine doses from the state forced appointments scheduled for this Thursday to be canceled. So the health system working to reschedule those canceled appointments. They hope they can move that into next week. Well, now to the latest on the coronavirus headlines. The state reporting more than 1,200 new cases and eight additional deaths over the last 24 hours. Uh, that's uh, actually 48 hours. That's a two-day total from both Sunday and Monday. New at four, the Pistons game against the San Antonio Spurs has been postponed. The NBA says a member of the Spurs organization has tested positive for COVID-19. So now contract tracing is underway. So we don't know when that game will be played just yet. City of Detroit is offering guidance today on people who had vaccination appointments tomorrow at the TCF Center. Appointments have been moved to Saturday. If you have an appointment, uh, the time uh, the time does rem the time remains the same the day has changed so make sure you keep track of the schedule and the weather could cause a lot of problems with those kinds of things this week too President Biden returns to the White House today to begin a week focused on getting COVID relief to so many struggling Americans. Kimberly Gill in the newsroom with more as Democrats and Republicans seem to be trying to find now some common ground now that we've moved uh, past impeachment. Yeah, they really are, Devin, and good afternoon to you. Both sides are turning their focus now on President Biden's agenda in the aftermath of former President Trump's impeachment trial. First up is Biden's massive COVID relief proposal. Democrats want the proposal passed before a lot of current relief, including the extended unemployment insurance benefit before it expires next month. Republicans argue the $1.9 trillion plan is too much. The president has showed little willingness to yield on his plan. The White House facing pressure on a pledge to reopen schools, too, within their first 100 days, and concerns new coronavirus variants could prevent vaccine progress. Republicans want to provide support where it's needed. 
But this package goes far beyond that scope. We had Republicans in the White House, Republican and Democratic mayors and governors in the White House last week, uh, talking to them about the plan, many of which whom support it. So uh, we're going to keep moving on in a bipartisan manner. Meanwhile, the legal problems for Donald Trump are far from over. He's facing at least two investigations in Georgia, and there are multiple criminal and civil probes in New York. There could also be charges filed against him in Washington, D.C. We'll keep you posted on all of it. Devin, we'll send it back to you. All right, Kim, we'll see you at 5. Yep. Uh, Healthcare.gov is now open for millions of Americans who need health insurance through the Affordable Care Act. The Biden administration is launching this special enrollment period starting today to allow people to obtain health insurance during the pandemic. President Biden signed an executive order last month intended to strengthen access to the ACA. 15 million uninsured people qualify for benefits under the Affordable Care Act policies. This special enrollment period again starts today. Day. It closes May 15th, so a couple of months to enroll. Still to come, it's been a busy day at airports across the country. We'll find out just how many people traveled through the air for Valentine's Day weekend. Also, a look at stories making headlines across the country, including a fiery crash on a highway in Mississippi. And caught on camera, a car crashing into a police patrol car. More on that crash next.